Right now, there's a bipartisan group of 10 senators trying to cobble together an infrastructure bill that pleases both Democrats and Republicans, can get 60 votes. In fact, earlier this afternoon, Senator Mitt Romney said the group had reached a preliminary deal. The 10 of us have reached a tentative uh, understanding, and uh, so we're not looking for adjustments. Uh, what we're looking for is to see whether our colleagues are open to it, uh, and, and we'll finally get out a piece of paper which lays it all out, and then see if we can get some, uh, some people to sign on and, and have enough support to think it has, has merit. So but when Senator Romney was asked yesterday about how the Democrats' climate agenda fits into the bill, he responded, quote, the Democrats' climate agenda is probably something they pursue, by and large, outside of an infrastructure bill. Okay, here's the thing. An infrastructure bill that is not climate-focused is quite literally not worth passing, probably worse than nothing, because climate is the central infrastructure challenge we face, obviously. Remember last month when one of the largest pipelines in the country was hacked and shut down for days? What does that pipeline carry? It's a fossil fuel transmission pipeline. It supplies fossil fuel to most of the East Coast. Remember what happened in Texas during the winter storm? That was all energy infrastructure. What drives on roads and bridges? Vehicles almost entirely powered by the fossil fuel that we have to keep burning so we don't heat the planet to a crisp. The infrastructure does not live outside the energy and climate system. It is the backbone to the energy and climate system. Not only that, but if you strip the climate plan out of the bill, you're going to lose a lot of Democratic senators and will be left with nothing to pass. Senator Ed Markey, Democrat of Massachusetts, who co-sponsored the resolution for a Green New Deal, told The New York Times, quote, the planet cannot survive another successful Republican obstructionist strategy. We have to have climate at the center of any infrastructure package in order to have my vote. No climate, no deal. And Senator Ed Markey joins me now. How are you feeling in the wake of the news from this another bipartisan gang, we got a new one. Yesterday there was, well, there's the Capitol one. Now we got this one. I'm hoping we just keep rotating new Senate bipartisan gangs on and on and on forever. Um, that The news, they have a deal, and the White House coming out basically with a wait and see message. What's your understanding of where things stand? Well, it sounds like to me that they have a package which is climate denial masquerading as bipartisanship. Um, we can't have a, um, an infrastructure bill in 2021 uh, that doesn't have climate at its center. Uh, and any other bill uh, that we are going to consider uh, that does not have uh, aggressive uh, solutions to the climate crisis uh, will just have that response, which I've been giving, which is no climate, no deal. That's the only way in which we can respond. This bill has to meet the magnitude of the challenges which the climate crisis is presenting to our country and to the planet. So let's talk about the politics here before we get to the substance. So you got Martin Heinrich saying an infrastructure package that goes light on climate and clean energy should not count on every Democratic vote. Sheldon Whitehouse, who said he's getting nervous the other day, said, I tweeted earlier this week about climate failure. I'm still nervous. We must get Senate Dems unified on climate on a real reconciliation bill, lest we get sucked into bipartisanship mud where we fail on climate. How, how big do you think that gang is of Democratic senators for whom this is just a red line non-starter? Uh, my view is that the Democratic Party won in 2020 huh, yes, on, good view. on this issue, the House, the Senate and the presidency. And it was driven by millions of young people all across our country who rose up, went out to the polls. They worked hard and they have a big IOU uh, that they should be able to call in. And I think the Democrats uh, across America are going to stand up and demand uh, that we pass a climate package an infrastructure bill uh, that is worthy of the name. Uh, the planet is running a fever. There are no emergency rooms for planets. We have to pass legislation that unleashes the wind and solar, all electric vehicle, plug-in hybrid, a battery storage technology, transmission technology revolution that we know is out there. We can save all of creation by engaging in massive job creation, union job creation by the millions. Uh, but we need to have an infrastructure bill that embodies all of those ambitions. And I'm afraid that this bill, uh, as it's being advertised, just does not meet that test. Well, you, you tick through some of the things that are in the, the, the sort of initial Biden American Rescue Plan proposal. Um, you know, there's money for, for battery storage and research on that. There's money for electric vehicle charging stations. There's some talk about that moving to the surface transportation bill, although that's in the weeds. There's a lot of stuff for, for the electric grid. There's some stuff on clean energy uh, in terms of, you know, renewable portfolio standards, if I understand. Do you have a sense 
of what is or isn't out. It's just a weird thing where these 10 centers in a room trading this stuff away. Like, do you are you read in on what is in the package or not? Well, I don't know what's in the package except what you just read about Senator Romney's commentary on it, which is that this package will not be dealing with the climate crisis in any significant way. And, you know, bottom line is the GOP used to stand for a uh, grand old party. Now it's GOP stands for the gas and oil party. Uh, we know that the fossil fuel industry is the largest single uh, contributor to this party. And so, yeah, we do need new highways. We do need new bridges, but we also have to have an infrastructure uh, revolution for uh, the energy sector so that we are the global leader, so that the rest of the world says the United States is back and we, uh, we believe in science and we know that we can solve this problem by unleashing this revolution. So that President Biden can go to Glasgow later on this year and say we're back. We are no longer the laggard. We are the leader again, and we must, must solve this problem uh, for future generations. That is what this bill must have so that President Biden will have the credibility he needs a meeting with the rest of the world later on this year. Yeah, no climate, no yes vote. Ed Markey is in that caucus, I suspect. There's a lot more uh, in that caucus as well. We're going to keep following this. Thank you so much, Senator. No climate, no deal. Thank you, Chris.